I'm most excited to talk about your new book, The Two-Hour Cocktail Party. Um, what was the genesis for this? So I wrote this book that came about from me hosting hundreds of parties, building a network that helped me launch my last company. I've seen so many benefits myself, really never having been a host and then becoming one. And so I wrote down everything that I've learned and I've trained about 65 people how to do exactly the same thing. And they've gotten better jobs. Uh, this one guy moved to Little Rock, Arkansas, didn't know a single individual there, not even a friend he could call up for a beer on a Friday night. They moved there because of his wife's family. And he started to host parties and threw out, you know, through hosting, it doesn't happen overnight. But after a couple months, he got an incredible C-level job at this education software business. He's now a director at this company. And all of that came from people that he met by hosting these events. And so that's my new goal and my mission is to help other people get those same benefits I got. So what, what are some of the, the hacks on this? Because in talking to you ahead of time, you know, we had discussed like, it's not easy. It's not difficult to throw these parties. It's easier than people think. Um, right. But most people just don't know where to start, don't know maybe how to host or what questions to ask or, you know, who to invite. So I'll tell you that if you're listening to this now, the first step, even before, even if you don't know how to do it, the first step is to look at your calendar and choose a date three to four weeks from today. But here's the hack. You're going to host your party on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday night. You're going to pick one of those days. Now, why do we pick a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday night? Because those are not socially competitive days. They're days when people are going to be available to come by and drop by your party. And that's what success is. For your first party, you want to have everybody show up. That's the biggest fear of a new host. Their biggest fear is that nobody's going to show up. And so a lot of my work involves guaranteeing that over 90% of all the people who say they're going to come actually will come. So that's a huge thing. Step one is to choose a date. Look at your calendar right now. Look at and choose a date, a Monday or a, a Tuesday or Wednesday night, at least three weeks, maybe four weeks in advance. And then by, by giving yourself three or four weeks, you have a long party runway that gives you plenty of time to invite and fill up your guest list to buy a few supplies, you know, it won't cost you more than $100 in supplies, just some basic alcohol and mixers, some plastic cups, some name tags, a marker. Once you do that, though, the next hack is that you're going to check that date and time. And by the way, it's only two hours long. When I host parties here, um, here in Austin, I like 6 to 8 p.m. because people do things a little earlier. But in New York, it was 7 to 9 p.m. or 8 to 10 p.m. But it's only two hours long. And what you're going to do is the next hack, once you choose the date, is you're going to reach out and send a text message one-to-one -to, -one to five people and try to get five yeses. So I may send a message to Justin as a close friend and say, hey, Justin, I'm thinking of hosting a party on Tuesday night from 7 to 9 p.m. on August 27th. If I do it, would you come? And once you get those five yeses, then your party is happening. And then it's on and then you can invite some other people. So that's the beginning nature of the hack on how to get started. I love it. Now, something cool that you still do is um, you help people. You sometimes will host parties on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're still doing? I still do. In fact, tonight I'm, I'm doing one for my friend Neville Medora, who lives here in Austin, um, and he said, oh man, I haven't gathered people. You know, I want to do it. I have this brand new house. I said, Neville, all it takes is a cocktail party. I'll show you exactly how. But the biggest thing I think is, you know, you host masterminds and masterminds are actually very complicated and they're very advanced. And it's my opinion that most people are better served to start with a cocktail party and then do a dinner party. And then maybe try to do a mastermind. But really, a cocktail party is so easy and you won't mess it up versus dinner. It's so stressful. You know, it's like anybody can host a dinner party exactly once. And most <laughs> people will never do it again. It's too stressful. They're like, oh, that was nice, but it was too much work. I found that the hack was that to build my network, I could get 80% of the benefits with 20% of the work by just hosting a cocktail party. When we hear the word cocktail party, we think lightweight, easy social occasion, 
somewhat casual, where you'll meet some new people and there'll be a lot of little conversations. Here's the reason why. The phrase cocktail party connotates for people an easy invitation that they're more likely to say yes to. Mm. And all my work is just how can you get people to come and when you say cocktail party, think about that LinkedIn connection that maybe you have, you haven't talked to in two years, but if you were to randomly reach out and say, hey, I'm getting some friends together, new and old friends and acquaintances, just to have a little cocktail party. That is so much of an easier invite than, hey, I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one dinner with you. I don't know. It's easy. I'm trying yeah. to, I'm just all about just trying to make it easy for people.